Hey everybody and welcome back to the Motor One channel where today I'll be taking you on a full tour of that right there, the 2022 BMW 2 Series. It's obviously a new car for the brand and there's a lot that's different. So right now I'm gonna show you the exterior, the interior, talk you through everything that's new and tell you what I like and what I don't. Let's get into it. All right, so thank you for joining me on this rainy day. I'm gonna apologize at the top of the video for the water spots. I have tried to film this three different times and you know what? The world is just not cooperating that much today. So yes, there are parts of it that are dirty. I'm sorry, I'm doing everything that I can, I promise you. But anyway, let's not let that take away from this car because it is one that I like a lot. This is the 2022 BMW 230i. I feel like a lot of the videos right now are of the M240i, and there are a few key differences between those two. Obviously, same body style, same dimensions for the most part, same styling for the most part. Uh, the big difference between the two is this is a four-cylinder engine, a two-liter turbocharged four-cylinder, and this is rear-wheel drive only. So at least for right now, the BMW 2 Series Coupe is available in all-wheel drive with the M240 and rear-wheel drive with a 230, so hypothetically, that makes this the better driver's car. I've been living with this for just about a week now, and honestly, there's a lot to say. I'm excited to mention that we do have a full review of this car coming out very soon on the channel, so if you haven't already done so, please subscribe so you don't miss out on that or anything that we're putting up. We're putting up new content every single week. This car is wearing the M Sport package, which dramatically changes the styling. Uh, the color has nothing to do with it. You can get this color red, I believe, on the non-M Sport as well. But with the M Sport package, a lot of things move to black. BMW calls that shadow line. It's sort of a funny word if you ask me, but shadow line basically means black trim. Um, the other big difference with M Sport is right there. So you get these little almost fang looking things. Uh, when you get rid of M Sport, these go away and it looks a lot less aggressive. Um, aggressive is a word I overuse when talking about a car styling, but it's a really dramatic difference, to be honest with you, between M Sport and non M Sport. Black is in these two fangs, black is underneath, and you can see with the kidney grills, uh, there is a little arrow section that opens when the car does need to cool, but otherwise at its default, it doesn't need to keep these open. So they stay shut and kind of flush and look nice. The headlights, they have this gold in them. That's because we have the optional full LED lights. I believe only on the full LEDs do you get this sort of neat gold trim <laughs> that runs through the headlight module. It looks kind of neat from afar. I don't think it serves any specific purpose, but on German cars like this, people like a little added flair every now and then. Optional 19 inch wheels, again, with shadow line trim, and that has to do with M Sport styling. And then we have on this car, the optional bigger brakes. So that is on the dynamic handling package. The brakes and the M Sport diff are gonna be $1,900. I talk about it a lot in the review of the car where I drive it. These brakes are fantastic. They have a ton of stopping power at high speeds, but at low speeds, they are an absolute monster in terms of how grabby they are and just getting used to the damn thing. So honestly, after a week with the car, I'm gonna say no on the dynamic, hand dynamic handling pack. I know a lot of you are thinking, oh, you know, I want the diff and that adds to the driving experience. Of course it does. But this car, as it is with the four cylinder, it doesn't need the added brakes. The standard brakes should be just fine on it. So save a little bit of money there. Skip over dynamic handling pack. They'll save you almost two grand. Before we get to the rear of the car, because there are a few styling things I want to point out there. Look at the proportions here. And I have the wheel turned in for the front three quarter angle here. Man, that is a handsome, handsome BMW. Uh, it's no secret that a lot of people think that they've kind of been on a cold streak for the last few years and girls are getting bigger and we don't quite know what to do with them. But in the midst of all that, they produce this and I think it looks fantastic. It's bigger in just about every way you can think. I think it's 2.6 inches wider than the previous gen car. It's 4.3 inches longer, and there's two additional inches between the wheelbase too. With all that, I think 
the added dimensions actually do a lot of good. Um, you see the really long hood line, which I like. I think that's sort of the focal point of the side profile of the car. And obviously right now with the reflection, the power bulge looks really nice. Of course, that's supposed to be for the bigger inline six, with it, which this car doesn't have. It still looks good nevertheless. Really nice dash to axle ratio too. Of course, this is a rear wheel drive based platform. That makes it different from the 2 Series Grand Coupe, which is gonna be a front wheel drive based platform. That's more similar to the BMW X1, X2 family. This is its own thing. So even though this is in addition to the Grand Coupe, the two door is really a completely different animal, especially with how the car drives. Um, points here across the board. I like this car far and away more than I like the 2 Series Grand Coupe. The other thing I wanna point out the side profile, are these new door handles for BMW. We're starting to see these on their electric cars too. So iX, i4, they have these flush door handles. I think they look good. You still have the ribbed area right here where you can lock and unlock the car. Um, the thing with these is that they're a little bit less to grab onto, but I kind of like that they're flush with the bodywork and I guess that makes things a little bit more aerodynamic too. No M badges in excess here, even though we have the, the, the M Sport package on this car, for BMW at least, they kind of toned it down. It's just a simple 230 badge on the back, twin exhaust outlets. The taillights are sort of a point of contention, and I think it's just the, how dramatic they look um, with the lighting signature. The lighting signature just dominates the entire thing, and that just glows, you know, super bright red. So at night, it looks like an evil villain is staring at you. I don't know, what do you guys think? I think the rest of the car, Looks quite nice, but something about these taillights just don't really do it for me. That said, that is a small complaint and an otherwise fantastic design. We forgot to point out shadow line trim as well here with the M Sport pack. So this blacks out and it kind of looks a little bit better, I think. Trunk space. Now we get to see all the stuff that I have. How random is this? I just picked up my tennis racket, but at least that gives you some perspective on how much room you have in the trunk. My backpack with all my camera gear, and then proof that I swear I've been trying to make this car clean for photos and video as well. But you can see, at least based with the backpack, how much extra space you have. So uh, checked in suitcases should fit no problem here, and then a few carry-ons too. It's a decent amount of trunk space for a car this size. You know, a small two-door coupe, we don't really expect too much, but not bad nevertheless. And before we hop inside, let's pop the hood too. Hood releases down here. Two pulls for a BMW. And then I like that there's actually not a secondary release. Two pulls from the side and it goes straight up. I don't know if I'm the only one that thinks this, but this four cylinder here, this looks like it takes up a lot of space <laughs> under the hood, especially knowing that they have to fit a bigger engine under here. I know it's probably this is just a placebo effect how big the, uh, the engine cover is overall, but for a four cylinder engine, it looks like decently tight packaging overall. You can see some of the other stuff has kind of big plastic coverings on it as well. Two liter turbocharged engine, 255 horsepower. BMW says it'll do zero to 60 in five and a half seconds. Conspiracy theory, I think both of those figures are underrated. 255 seems very underrated. I would kill to get this thing on a dyno and five and a half to 60 to me feels slow as well. This feels like a genuinely quick car. Please again, uh, make sure to watch the review on this car when it goes up. We'll make sure it's linked in this video too because we talk a lot about the performance. This is a fast car uh, that makes the M240i an even faster car that honestly not many people need. So if you want a two series and you're considering, you know, do I want to spend the extra couple grand for an M240? No might be the answer for some of you. And this is a great option instead. Right away, it's a fantastic interior. It feels really high quality. Um, I think that's one of the biggest differentiating points between this or if you're looking at something like a Subaru BRZ. Of course, this is more expensive, but it's close enough in price to where people are probably cross-shopping those considering there are not many you know, sports cars that are two-door left on the market. This is a really nice interior, especially for the money. 
Um, the only weird thing for me here is this. I feel like somebody got really excited with a stamp and these are right here on the door panel and they're actually tucked behind too where the rear seats are. Um, other than that, the rest of it looks quite good. Let's hop inside. Should I hop in the back first? Yeah, let's do that because I'll talk a lot about up front. Just for you, I will get in the back seat. Um, it is not a quick process. You have to wait for the front seat to do its thing. Then, oof. You step back here and then same sort of thing. Let's see if I can make this wider angle so you can see what's going on here. I'm not a tall person. I'm 5'8", I'm not even close to six foot and I'm having uh, trouble here. This is one of the few times where I'll say the back seats of a car are really not great. I mean, my head is pretty much right up against <laughs> the ceiling. The legroom is minimal. The, the position itself is a little upright. It's not horrible, but there's just no headroom uh, with the roof line. The, the way the proportions are on this car is just not great. There's center console that folds down. You do get cup holders and you do get uh, two different USB ports. That's nice for two phones back here. No fan speed controller, but you can control the airflow direction uh, and the temperature up and down. So it's not completely barren. You do get a nice little place to put your arm to. There's the attack of the triangles again, um, but not a place you want to put your friends is the easiest way to put it. Okay, let's get out of this backseat prison. Graceful as ever, I know. And let's talk about the much more fun portion of the interior, which is up front. Shut the door here. Quick press of the button right there in the center console. And the whole thing gets fired up. So the uh, instrument cluster right here is optional. And I believe this is standard. And right on cue, CarPlay doing its thing. CarPlay is a huge deal here um, because it's wireless. So in BMWs in the last few years, we've had issues with CarPlay when we're testing these cars. Sometimes it just craps out without ever telling you why. Sometimes it's hard to connect initially with your phone. All that's gone. I think that's because this is a new generation uh, of iDrive for BMW. This has been flawless the entire week. Your phone hooks up right away. CarPlay is always just waiting here. And then, you know, if you don't want to use it, and just the regular native iDrive stuff is here too. It is just about easier than it's ever been. Um, I think with iDrive, it doesn't get too much glory these days just because it's always kind of been good. There's nothing very exciting or novel about it, but it is just a good, reliable uh, infotainment system. It remains one of my favorites that I've interacted with for sure. I think the only thing is here, because the 2 Series is such a small car, I mean, you know, a really quick arm's length away. I, this is a bit redundant now. The, the iDrive controller, which has been around since the beginning of time, it feels like, it just kind of works better as a touchscreen. I don't think we need all this and the added complexity of the buttons and the controller, but you know what? I'm sure some people like it and they would tell me I'm dead wrong. This is the only part of the interior that really is bad when it comes to fingerprints and getting it mucked up like that. Touchscreen's not great too. You can see some fingerprints there, but I swear every touchscreen these days fingerprints quite bad. This is the sort of black plasticky bit. It's the only area where it's super fingerprinty. Just keep a little rag and get rid of that. But underneath it, two cup holders and then a nice wireless charging pad. Uh, I have the iPhone 12 Max. So it's about as big as a phone can get and it barely fits with a case on. Um, you know, iPhone smaller than that or other Android devices should fit just fine, but it feels barely big enough to accommodate everything today in the tech world. What else is going on here? Really nice heated steering wheel that's optional with the premium package, which this car does get. That comes along which, with uh, heated seats too. So some nice convenience features overall. They say the headliner is a little bit nicer, though that's kind of hard to tell. It just feels somewhat normal. My only knock against the gauge cluster that it, you can't really configure it. I think these graphics look super cool, but in other BMWs, um, you can 
make them do a lot more things. You know, even if I change it to sport mode or eco mode, any of that stuff, well, it tells you what's going on here, but nothing about this changes. So it's not um, any of the, you know, th there's nothing about this that changes its mind or changes the configuration. The nav does pop up, but it's kind of just a simple thing in the middle. Anyway, it's a roundabout way of saying, I wish you could do more with the gauge cluster. Shifter is easy to work. Put it into reverse. No 360 camera on this specific version, but there are sensors that go completely around the car and they let you know, you know, when you're getting close uh, backing in the car or parking in head on. And a really nice clear backup camera with guidance lines. That's all good stuff. From a safety standpoint, there's one major omission here. This car does not have adaptive cruise control. It does have emergency autonomous braking and a couple other features that you do want. Blind spot monitoring too. You can see a little triangle in the mirror, but it doesn't have adaptive cruise. So if you're somebody who likes to get on the highway, um, just kind of set it and forget it and allow the car to um, monitor the car in front of you and keep the distance, keep the speed relative, that's something that this car should have at its price point, for sure. It should have it standard. They should all come with it. Um, that reminds me, this car out of the box is just shy of 37 grand. And then this one with three distinct options on it, M Sport, which does all that styling and then a few things to the driving experience, dynamic handling package with the brakes, uh, and the uh, differential, and then the premium package, which adds some nice features to the interior and the optional Harman Kardon system. All that, it's just over $46,000. This is a way to get a two series for less than 50 grand. That's kind of where uh, it is somewhat of a value proposition. I mean, the M240i will definitely go well over 50 grand by the time you put options on it. That car also has over 130 horsepower more than this one. I think it's a decent value for what you're getting. Like I mentioned earlier, if you're looking at a BRZ or another two-door, you know, 200 odd horsepower sports car, this has a much nicer interior. Um, and I think it looks just as good as those other cars too. So there's your quick tour of the 2022 BMW 230i. Uh, like I said, tune back in and make sure you're watching the review of this car and then all the other upcoming reviews we have coming out soon on the motorone.com channel. And thanks for watching.